Hey! Hey! I'm Mr. O, here with another oh, wow. moment at the Children's Museum of Houston. Here, try this one. Whoa, that is way heavier than the phone. But it's weird. They're the same size, but one's heavier than the other. Well, that's because they're different masses. But they're the same size. That's a common mistake. You're getting mass confused with volume. Volume is how much space an object takes up, what my assistants were referring to as size. As you can see, all of these materials have the same volume. Mass, however, is how much matter is inside the object, which in turn helps determine how much it weighs. So the foam doesn't have as much matter in it, so it feels lighter than the steel, which has a lot of mass. So even though they have the same size and shape, they have different masses, and that's why some are heavier than others? Precisely. But how can they have different masses? Ah, well that comes down to density. Density is a combination of mass and volume. It's how much matter is in a given amount of space or how much mass an object will have given its volume. In the case of our component, we show how objects with different densities and the same volume have different masses. However, we can also show how substances with different densities and the same mass have different volumes. For example, this piece of aluminum has a mass of 45.5 grams. To get that same mass in styrofoam, we need this much. As you can see, even though both of these have the same mass, they have different volumes because they have different densities. We can calculate density by taking the mass and dividing by volume, or density equals mass divided by volume. Let's take this piece of foam, for example. I can measure its mass using this balance, which is 54.4 grams. I can then use a ruler to measure its radius and height, 15 centimeters and 2.2 centimeters respectively, which I can use to calculate its volume, which turns out to be 1,555 cubic centimeters. From this, I can divide the mass by the volume, and I get 0.03 grams per centimeter cubed for its density. What's very important about density is that it is a defining characteristic of a substance. In other words, every substance will have the same density no matter the shape. So even if I cut this foam up, when I remeasure its mass and volume and calculate density, it turns out to be the same density. Now density is a very important property to know. Whether you're designing buildings, making dams, creating airplanes, or even designing a car, you need to know what the density of the materials are that you're using. Density is also an excellent predictor of what will sink or float. Let me show it to you a different way. Before we begin, remember, science is fun, but it can also be dangerous. So always have a responsible adult helping you. We're gonna change density to make something float. For this, you'll need a cup, a spoon, a hard-boiled egg, water, and salt. First, drop your egg into the water. It sank. Is that because the egg is more dense than the water? Well, let's calculate and find out. So, the water is one gram per milliliter, and the egg is 1.04 grams per centimeter cubed. So the egg is more dense than the water, which is why it sank. Good, now add in a bunch of salt to your water and stir it to dissolve as much as possible. Then put your egg in again. Oh wow, it floats now. So the water is now 1.16 grams per milliliter. I get it. By dissolving a lot of salt in the water, it becomes more dense, so the egg is now less dense than the salt water and floats. So the more salt you dissolve in the water, the more dense it becomes. In fact, some places like the Great Salt Lake in Utah and the Salt Sea, also known as the Dead Sea in Israel, have salt concentrations so high that people floating in it can almost sit up. This has been another Oh Wow Moment from the Children's Museum of Houston. We hope your mind can come out to play.